So back in March, I believe, I bought myself the Sony a7 IV, the camera which records me right now. And until now I have to say that I'm really happy with this camera. It takes great photos, it takes great video, it basically ticks all the boxes I wanted this camera for. Uh, it's probably even overkill for me because, you know, I'm such a small YouTuber and this setup is completely, you know, over the top. By the way, just ignore the fact that I use two microphones. This one is the DATS Mic 2 and this one is the Shure MV7. I just want to test them again. I have this gear acquisition syndrome, it's called, I guess. Um, so I always want to buy new stuff and new microphones. I have to, you know, hold myself back a little bit. How I do this is I test all the stuff I have and see how great it is so I don't actually have to buy new stuff. I don't know, maybe this one helps if you have the same problem as me. But back to the Sony a7 IV. I will not tell you all the details, you probably know this, but what I can say about this camera is that it takes amazing photos and it also takes amazing video. I have to admit that it's quite a chunky boy. I mean, I used the Sony a7 IV with the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter art lens. This lens is huge. Combined with the camera, it's I think around one and a half kilos, it's probably a little bit less, but still it's pretty big and pretty heavy to carry around all day. So this is definitely not an, you know, everyday camera. For me at least it's not, it's just too heavy. Even if I, you know, use a strap like, like this one here, I believe it's from Peak Design. Even if I use a strap like this, you know, it's still too heavy to carry it around all day long, unless of course I specifically want to make pictures or specifically want to create video. Keep this in mind, if you want a camera that you can, you know, carry around every day and have always ready to shoot, then probably one of the APS-C cameras from Sony is the better option because they are just smaller and they still have great image quality. But of course, this one is full frame, one of the reasons why I bought this camera. I think it has a 7K sensor and it downsamples the video to 4K. That means that this video has very, very sharp 4K video. I think it's it looks just fantastic. I also bought myself a Moment Cinebloom diffusion filter, 5% only because, you know, I saw this one clip by uh, Caleb from Moment uh, that he posted on his channel and he said that he used this 5% and I just loved the look of this very subtle effect with this Cinebloom filter. I can show it to you. Uh, it's this red uh, ring, it's pretty iconic actually for the Moment line. I can recommend it, I love it, but uh, I, I'm not sure if I should make a review about it. I don't have it on right now, but um, for all the other videos I did and probably for all the other videos I will do in the future, I will use this filter just because, you know, the lights, they will look a little bit more cinematic, I guess. A lot of people complain about the rolling shutter with this camera. Actually, for a lot of people, I think the rolling shutter is a deal breaker. For me, I have to say, you know, I mainly use this camera on a tripod. Uh, it stands in front of me and films me. So I, I have no problems with rolling shutter. Um, I mean, if I would take the camera, you know, and, you know, move it like that, maybe I would have problems with rolling shutter, but I don't vlog or anything. I just do this videos. Um, most of the shots I do are talking head or, you know, like, kind of b-roll cinematic cinematic not really but kind of b-roll you know slow-mo shots so yeah i don't really care about the the rolling shutter so this uh, is no problem for me the steady shot on this camera if you vlog even though i said that i don't vlog but if you want to vlog the steady shot function on this camera is great i think it, it works pretty good if you really want to buy a gimbal with this camera you of course can do that but uh, at least for me and for the purpose I use this camera for, steady shot is perfect. I like it. Also, the S-Log preview of this camera, it has a function. You can press it and then it previews the how the image will look if you, you know, apply a lot later in post-processing. So this preview, the, the S-Log preview, it's great. I love it. I have it on right now. In this moment, I, I record in picture profile 8, which is S-Log 3, I think. Think. And this S-Log preview is just great. This camera has a specific crop function, which I really enjoy because you can get even closer to your subject. If your if your zoom from your lens isn't enough, you can press the crop button and it will crop in. You have a little bit less megapixel, I think. But I think for video, like I said, I'm not a professional, but I think for video, it doesn't really make a difference. So 
I use this crop fu function quite a lot, but it's just a very, very tiny icon on the screen in the corner. So in the beginning, when I started to use the camera, I often had the problem that I was on the crop mode and I just, you know, didn't realize it. So keep an eye for this little icon in the corner, otherwise you will be cropped in a lot. And one of the main reasons why I bought this camera is because of the flip screen. I have to admit it, I mainly film myself and even if I film others or if I, you know, want to take a picture of something, I frequently use the flip screen. So for me at least, the flip screen is mandatory. Without the flip screen, I would not have bought this camera. And also it's very easy to color grade the footage of this camera because I just, you know, downloaded the conversion LUTs from the website from Sony and then I just slap on the LUT and that's basically it. Now I can, you know, tweak and twerk a little bit and that's it. So the, the dial where you can switch between the modes, that is very awesome. But what I don't understand, and I, and I don't know if this is still the case if you buy, buy the camera, but what I don't understand is that you have to go into the settings and select every single option you want to change between the settings. And, and for me, that is a little bit confusing because I thought if I switch the mode, you know, the settings that I just had are saved for that profile. And when I switch back, you know, then they are there again, but that wasn't the case. So I had basically to switching between the modes in the beginning wasn't working for me. That was a little bit annoying, but um, I mean, I can live with that. Now the mode is very customized and very useful. Maybe that's the reason why they don't do it so that you have to customize it by yourself and be happy with it. I don't know. Also, the webcam feature of this camera is super awesome. I really enjoy it. I use it all the time for Zoom calls. I mean, nobody really sees that you're using a super high quality camera uh, because at least my colleagues, <laughs> they don't care about the cameras, but at least I know that I use a high quality camera and that I have to say can be good, but it can be bad as well. So you have to be careful with that. But all in all, the feature, the webcam feature, super nice feature, very nice to have. And uh, I really enjoy it and use it a lot. And it's very customizable. The camera is extremely customizable. Every button on this camera, you can basically make your own and select what this button is for. And that's what I did. I copied a bunch of settings from YouTubers I really enjoy. And that are my settings now. And I really enjoy the settings. And you have to, you know, it's just, you know, you, you can spend hours just customizing your camera and, you know, create a package that fits your needs. And that's really nice about this camera. I think that is a very good feature that you can customize every single button. And there are of course also things I have to learn about the camera. For example, the white balance, I'm still learning that. I think I've became a little bit better with white balance, but I'm still not there. Also exposure is a problem for me. I suck at exposing my image correctly. I just, I'm feeling like I never correctly expose my image. And what I definitely need for the camera is a VND filter, a, a variable ND filter, because if you want to film anything outside and you want to stay with your aperture of 2.8, you need a variable ND filter. So I definitely need one for this camera. Um, that's probably my next purchase for the camera. You know, if you buy this camera, you, you have to keep in mind that this is just a tool. And while it will probably make it easier for you to produce good content, it doesn't produce the good content itself, you know? You have to put in the work and this camera will actually probably give you a little bit more time to work on yourself to improve your, your videos or your, your cinema projects because it's just easier to use, customizable and has some nice functions. The camera itself will not make you a better cinematographer, videographer, photographer. That's not going to happen. That's my experience with the camera so far. I will probably update you in a few months again. And if you enjoyed the video or it was helpful to you, then I would appreciate a like. Likes help me out a lot. If you want to see more of the videos that I create, which are coming pretty irregularly, I have to admit, um, but I'm doing my best. Like I said, I have no fucking time at the moment. I'm studying full-time and I'm working part-time. Maybe you have seen the video. And now I'm still doing this YouTube channel. I tried to make one video a week. I really tried. And I think I've, I've nailed it for like three weeks. But, you know, making one video a week is not as fulfilling as I thought. It probably pushes the algorithm to the sky. But 
I don't really care about that. I just want to create cool and fun and informative videos. I try my best and if you want to support me, subscribe. That really would mean the world to me. And, you know, nothing left to say except for have a great evening or day or morning or night and stay safe.